Hi guys, welcome back. Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. This is another video on the conjugate beam method, and we're going to do something a little trickier than we did last time. So there's a couple of tricks that we're going to look for in this question. And um, yeah, let's just get right into it, because this is a little bit of a long question. So I am going to go quickly through some steps, like finding the shear and the moment diagram. Um, I'm not going to take too much time doing that. I'm going to just give you the reactions. Um, if you want to learn how to find the reactions and draw the shear and bending moment diagram, we have videos for that. So go to those. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. So we're given a beam here. We have a point load and a distributed load, and we're given E and I, and we're asked to find the deflection and slope at B using the conjugate beam method. Okay, so, um, you know, if you do want an introduction to the conjugate beam method, go to the video previous to this. I'll, I'll put a link in the description. Um, but the first step in the conjugate beam method is to solve the moment diagram, because we need to construct what's called the M over EI, M over EI diagram. Once we determine the M over EI diagram, we can put the M over EI di diagram onto the conjugate beam as a, as a loading, as a distributed loading, and we can solve for deflection and slope of the real beam. So let's go ahead and start. Um, I'm going to just give you the, uh, give you, give you the reactions, okay, um, for this one. Uh, AY is equal to 78. If you, if you do want practice, please, by all means, go ahead and solve this on your own. No problem with that. CY is 162 kilonewton. Okay, so those are the reactions. So with that being said, we can go ahead and start the bending moment diagram. So we're gonna go up 78, okay. We're gonna go down 180, which is gonna give us 102. Okay, and then we're gonna go back up uh, 162, which is CY to 60. And we are going to go down to zero. Okay, and uh, if we go ahead and multiply 76, 78 by 5, okay, we're going to get 390. Okay, subtract 102 times 5, okay, that's going to give us negative 120, so that we're going to come all the way down here. And we have a linear uh, 60 degrees here, so uh, base times height, which is 4 meters, so this is going to be 4 meters, 5 meters, 5 meters, base times height divided by 2, okay, and uh, if we add that to 120, we're going to get zero, we're going to go to zero here, and this is a parabolic shape here. That's going to be, uh, that's going to come into play actually. Okay, so um, this is the moment diagram, and all we need to do here is divide everything by EI to get the M over EI diagram. Now, I'm going to put the table up on the screen for the conjugate beams, and this one's a little trickier actually. So, we need to convert our beam here to a conjugate beam. And how do we do that? Well, um, let's take a look at the cases that we have for our beam, and we can select maybe one that fits. So looking at uh, beam C on the table, the real beam actually is, uh, it's opposite, but it's the same as our beam that we have in our question. So the free end um, becomes a fixed, and as you can see, in a continuous beam where the roller is in, in between either a free end or two supports, that becomes a hinge. Okay, so roller becomes a hinge, and a pin on the end of the beam stays as a pin, always. So with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, just copy that that example C from the table. So our conjugate beam is, okay, we're going to, this is going to remain the same for the roller. All right, and the roller for the, sorry, the pin, and then the roller at C becomes an hin internal hinge, and the free end becomes fixed. Now we're going to take our moment diagram and we're going to place it onto the conjugate beam, all right, as a loading. So it's going to look like this, okay. Okay, and this is going to be up and this is down, okay. Very good, so that's the uh, M over EI diagram. Okay, we'll write the values in here. Very good, so that's the first step, is we've taken, we've created the conjugate, or we've, uh, we've found the conjugate beam for our real beam, and we've put our M over EI diagram onto that beam. What I've done here is I've gone ahead and I've, um, I've copied out the uh, more a clean and a larger version of the conjugate beam with the loading, the M over EI diagram, and we're going to go ahead and we're gonna solve 
for what we need to in order to get the slope and the deflection at D, because that is the point of this question. So we're looking for slope at D and deflection at D. So point D is over here. And we're going to need to go ahead and we're going to need to find the shear at B and the moment at B of the conjugate beam. And those are going to equal the slope and the deflection at the real beam. So I've drawn what we're looking for here. We're looking for theta D and uh, delta D. And first of all, if we, need to if we want to find the shear, either to the left or the right of D, we're going to need to find a reaction of some sort. And uh, it looks like we're going to need to find the reaction at A, okay? Because we have everything to the left, but we don't have uh, AY. Okay, AY is unknown. So first things first, let's solve for AY. Then we'll have all of the forces here, including the, the support at A, and then we can solve for the shear. So taking the moment about C, okay? Because at C, we have a hinge, so we can cut the beam at C and take the moment uh, just of, at C of the left of C in order to find A. So let's go ahead and start with that. Okay, so we have A here, that's a negative moment. Okay, and that's going to be multiplied by 10. Now, let's take a look at the distances here, okay? Because for the next triangle and the next area here, when we take the moment, we're gonna need to know a few things. And we don't know the distance from this point to the point B to C is 5 meters, but and A, A to B is 5 meters, but what is this to the point of zero shear? Okay, if we go back here, we'll see that the shear that we calculated is 102. Okay, and that is actually equal to the slope of this line. Okay, so if we go ahead and divide 390 by 102, we're going to get the distance 3.92 meters. And that is actually the distance from B to this point of zero moment. Now, the point from C to the zero moment is just 5 minus 3.92, and that's 1.18, okay? So now we can go ahead and continue finding the moment about point C of uh, AAC, essentially. So what is, the, uh, what is the moment about this shape? Well, we have a negative moment, and let's factor out the EI, okay? Very good. So we have a negative moment, uh, so we have 390, which is the height times the base, 5 times 1 half, okay, times the distance to the centroid. So we have 5 plus, and then we have uh, 1 third of 5 to this point here, okay? So times 5 plus 5 over 3, okay? And let's come down here, some more room. The next triangle here, so this one, this triangle here, we're going to find the area of that. So we have 390, okay, times 3.92 times one half because it's a triangle. And then we have the distance to the centroid of this shape is going to be this here, 1.18 plus 3.92 and two thirds of that actually. So three over two times 3.92. Okay, very good. And finally, we have this little triangle here. That's going to be a positive moment because it's counterclockwise. And we have 120, which is the base times 1.18, okay? Okay, times 1 over 2, okay, times uh, 1 third of 1.18, okay? And if we calculate that, we're going to get the AY, and we've assumed uh, upwards is our AY, okay? Our AY here is actually negative 925 kilonewton meter squared over EI. Very good. Okay, so actually, we'll change the direction because we did assume that AY was in the other direction, and it's not. It's down, Okay. So that's a, that's a good start. So let's go ahead and we can solve for the slope at D. Okay, so let's find the shear at D. That's actually equal to the slope at D. And let's go ahead and start. So all we need to do is just uh, resolve all of these triangular loadings. We have a parabolic loading and we just add them up. So let's take EI out, okay? And right here, let's start with this shape here. Okay, we know that um, the area of a parabola of this shape is 1 over 3 base times height. So we have 1 over 3, and this is 4 meters, okay, times 4 times height, which is 120. Very good. Okay, and that's actually negative, okay, because the arrows are down. Let's do this next little triangle here, okay, and that is going to be the height, which is 120 times 1.18 times 1 half, okay. Now this is a positive sh uh, area over here. Okay, we're going to have 390 plus... Oh, 390 times 3.92 times 1 half, okay? And coming down here, we're going to have this triangle here, okay, which is 390 times 5 times 1 half. Finally, we have our AY, which is negative, and it's 925.1.
Very good. Okay, we're, if we add this up, we're going to get a value for our slope at D, okay, of 564 over EI. Okay, I'll just exclude the units right now. And 564 divided by our EI value, so we have 70 times 2340. And that is going to be equal to 0.00344 radian. And as we got a positive value there, it is counterclockwise. That's our sign convention. Perfect. Let's go ahead and solve for the deflection now. So the deflection at D is equal to the moment at D. And we're going to do exactly the same thing we just did, except now we're going to multiply by the distance to the centroid of each shape. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with that. So we have, um, and let's start from the left this time. Okay, so let's take the moment at D. Okay, well, let's take the 1 over EI out of the equation. Very good. And let's go ahead and start with A. So we have A, that's negative. Okay, so we're going to consider in this case when we take the moment, we're just going to use the sign convention that we have here. So if it's down, that's going to be negative, and if it's up, it's going to be positive. So um, AY here is negative 925.1 times 14, right? So 5, 5, and 4. Okay, that's good. And what about this triangle here? Well, that's going to be positive 390 times 5, okay, times 1 half, okay, times the distance to the, to the centroid. Okay, so what's the distance to the centroid? It's simply going to be uh, 4 plus 5 plus 5 over 3. Okay, we have 4 plus 5, so 9, okay, plus 5 over 3. Very good. And let's go ahead and work this one out here. So we have a height of 390. Okay, we have 3.92 as the base of this triangle. We have 1 half multiplied by, because, because it's a triangle. And let's go ahead and multiply by the distance to the centroid, which is right here. So we have this distance, which is 5.18, okay, plus 2 thirds of this distance. Okay, so 3 over 2 times 3.92. Very good. Let's go ahead and calculate this area here. So we have negative 120. Okay, times the base, times 1 over 2, the area, times the distance to the centroid. So then we have 4 plus 1 third of 1.18. And finally, we have our parabola here. Okay, uh, the area for the parabola is 1 over 3 times the height, okay, times the base. And the centroid of a parabola is 3 fourths, okay? So 3 over 4, so that is going to be 3. So 3 meters to the centroid here. Very good. And if we calculate that out, we're going to get a value of 2,417 kilonewton meter cubed over EI. Okay, and that's going to be equal to, go ahead and just plug in EI like we did for this one. And you're going to get 14.76 millimeters up. And that's going to be the deflection at D. Cool. So uh, I know it got a little messy at the end there. I tried to make it as simple as possible when I explained it, but uh, it does get quite messy. But I did want to try something a little harder because I know I have gotten some co uh, comments that maybe some of the examples are too easy that we do. The reason why I try and avoid questions like this is they can get very messy with lots of different little numbers here. But uh, try it on your own. See if you get what I got. Um, there is different, you know, methods in which you can which direction and what what how you want to calculate the centroid and stuff so uh, try it on your own and you know if you enjoyed this video as always like and subscribe <laughs>